Hey guys, Dalen here, and welcome to this video. So, this is the fourth day of my Road to 99 Hunter series. And, um, I've actually done a lot of Hunter today. Um, I'm actually gonna get 96 today. I'm only 115k off of that. Or, not 90, yeah, 96. I'll be getting that today. I'm only 115k off. So that's maybe 45, may, well, closer maybe to half an hour of training. It's not that much at all. So, um, you know, I'm definitely gonna get that tonight. I'm probably going to go to bed afterwards, because uh, I'm planning on staying up pretty late tomorrow night. Um, I'm going to maybe see if I can go about getting 97 tomorrow. Um, I'm not going to really make any promises that I will, just because I don't want to. It just d depends on how much I, f like, how I feel about training Hunter tomorrow. Um, you know, as painful as Hunter is, is, like, I'm not saying that it's not painful, but it's actually getting easier to do. Um, I'm able to do more at a time and just more in general during the day, like, in a day I'm able to do more Hunter training, so it's getting a lot easier. Um, which is something that I'm glad for because, uh, the easier that it is right now is just means the faster I'll be able to get 99 and, the, you know, the sooner I'll be able to get this 99 out of the way. Um... So, I'm gonna see about going for 97 tomorrow, uh, if I don't get 97, I will get, I will get at least halfway to 97, if not more so, most likely more so, but, um, if not halfway, at least, or if not, like, trying to get 97 tomorrow, at least halfway, for sure, um, so, yeah, you know, I'm, I, I did four hours today, so that's about a good 800k, you know, doing five hours tomorrow I don't think is in, is entirely, like, out there at all, um, so I'm gonna try and go for that, um, hopefully it'll get work out. I think, so I just farmed some more, um, Urzile and made some more, uh, Juju Hunter potions. I think that I have enough now for 99. If not, obviously, uh, it's not too hard to make them. I have a lot of Urzile seeds. Um, you know, just in my inventory, I have seven. So I have a lot of Urzile seeds for um, Juju Hunter potions, and then you know, tracking disease Jujinkos for for um, the vines. They're, they're not that hard. Definitely not. It just takes time. It's a little tedious, but it's not hard at all. Um, so that's uh, definitely a good thing. But um. Yeah, so I did a lot of Hunter today. I plan on doing probably a lot of Hunter tomorrow. I'm aiming for 99 maybe Friday or Saturday. I'm thinking that is definitely plausible. Um, I definitely think I could get there. So um, that'll probably be the end of the series. You know, this won't be a very long series, maybe a week or so. So, you know, Hunter, like I said, is not, it is a fast skill. It's just tedious and almost painful to train. And unfortunately, um, the fastest method is Jodinkos, 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 and there's really no comparable method, at least to my knowledge, that um, compares to the XP rates of Jodinkos. There's just no method like that. Um, I mean, if you play Heist and get like bonus and like bonus experience, I think you can get around 150, 200k bonus experience an hour, depending on how many wins and losses you get. But um, you know, that's really the only thing, and you still be spending the same amount of time, tr get, like, quote-unquote training, you just would be spending less time getting, like, actually training Hunter the skill, but you would still have to spend that time that you didn't spend training Hunter playing Heist. And, um, to be really honest, I'm not the biggest fan of Heist. I think it's a fun mini game. don't get me wrong, I, um, uh, uh, think it's fun, but it's more, um, of a, you know... A mini game to play with a clan or a mini game to play with friends like it's more of a mini game to play with people that you know it's definitely easy and you can play it with strangers i just think it's a lot easier and honestly a little bit more fun to play with people who um who you know it's just more entertaining i guess so um heist really isn't my thing for you know just grinding and getting um hunter experience so i'm just gonna go ahead and just you know suffer through the actual just grinding of um hunter for sure so Anyways, but Hunter was actually not the only thing that I did today. I also did Fate of the Gods quest. It was a glorious quest for lore, I'm not gonna lie. It was glorious. Um, Lore-wise, it was amazing. Um, if you're a big fan of, like, RuneScape lore, Zeros, uh, uh, Sixth Stage lore, you know, it definitely is a very good quest to do. I definitely recommend the quest for its lore. It's it's great. Um, the quest itself, uh, it's, I'm kind of middle road about it. Um, I think that it was a good quest in and of itself. I think it was a good quest. Um, it had, 
it wasn't, it really wasn't, there wasn't too many puzzles, you know, you had that door puzzle, and then running through Fernaske, I think, was a puzzle in and of itself, um, so there were a good amount of puzzles that were not too difficult, but they made it challenging, and then you had some decent combat, you know, fighting the nils are not very hard, or the nihils are not hard at all, um, if you're going for the Annihilator, uh, title, which is, um, if you kill all four nils while they're or like nils while you're they're attacking you, um, that can be difficult. I actually died twice trying to do that, and then um, I decided I'll just come back to it later when I have better gear. Um, but you know, no, if you kill them one by one, it's definitely just it's extremely easy. You don't need all that much food at all. I I use maybe ten rock tails, and that's just because I got hit a couple times, um, and that I so I wouldn't actually have needed it. Um, so, and then, um, when you have to, uh, basically survive Ma's Nightmare, Ma's Nightmare, uh, that's actually fairly easy. The only hard part, in my opinion at least, is tanking about maybe the last 20, 10 to 20%, um, of the muspas you know they start hitting you a lot but if you have a good amount of food like if you bring rock tails rock tail soups probably you could even get away with sharks um if you bring just a lot of food and make sure that you just keep your hit, hit points high and just keep like if you have soul split definitely use it turmoil use it um and just keep attacking things you know you can easily tank it out because um basically when the meter gets to zero all the muspas will disappear so basically you just have to survive you don't even have to like kill all of them you just have to survive through it and after it once the meter hits zero percent they'll all disappear so you don't have to worry about killing all of them after the nightmare is over which is good um so those are probably that was probably one of the most difficult parts of the quest and i mean it wasn't even hard it was just more so you had to survive um i think Traveling through Fernaske is a little difficult too. Um, you know, it's a little bit hard to get your bearings. I'm thinking that probably later, if you guys haven't done it yet, that there will most likely be um, people who compile maps of the area, so it'll be a bit easier for you guys to do that. Um, I obviously did it on release, and I kind of just was wandering around the Fernaske region blindly. Um, it wasn't too bad. It did not take me all that long. I didn't use too much food. I used a little bit, but you also have areas where you can um, where it heals up heals you up so um you can take advantage of those as well um but in terms of lore it was a glorious quest for lore definitely um you learned a lot about xeros obviously because he was the main focus of the quest however you also did a lot learn a lot about saren especially considering how much we really know about her which isn't all that much uh, we know a little bit about her, obviously, from Morning's End um, quests and, like, Roving Elves, Regicide, like, the Elf City kinds of quests. But we really, there are, I think, honestly, our lim our knowledge of Saren is limited, especially when you consider we of um, the knowledge we have of gods like Zamorak or, like, um, really, Zamorak, he has a very, we know a lot about him. Um, I think Saradoman as well, we know a lot of his history. Guthix, obviously, we know most of his history, um, if not all of it. Um, so we, you know, Saren is a god, she's more obscure, we know less about her, and so we did learn, com in comparison, quite a bit about her. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so this is spoilers. I will um, say that right now. Um, this is gonna contain spoilers, basically. So, uh, if you haven't done the quest and you don't want spoilers, you know, feel free to just um, stop watching. Uh, but so basically, I was actually really surprised to uh, hear. I, I mean, I didn't really expect, I guess, that Saren and Zeros would have um, were basically kind of basically siblings, they were, um, counterparts of each other, really, um, Saren is the light, like, the divine entity, I guess, created by the elder gods of light, and Xeros is the entity of darkness, um, I thought that was really interesting, and I like, I kind of do like the, um, the relationship, I'm thinking that possibly, you know, uh, because of this relationship, the, um, like, during the God Wars of Gilinor in the, I think, what was it, the Second Age, um, how, you know, in a lot of, um, in a lot of, you know, accounts of history, we hear a lot about Saren and Zeros kind of clashing a little bit. I'm thinking that might, that might not be entirely the truth. Um, because obviously Saren and Zeros have a relationship because they were both created by Ma, and, um, 
lived in Fernaske region. Um, I don't know how long they lived there together, but I know that they did obviously um, reside there for a while after their creation. It wasn't like they were created and then left. Um, so obviously they know each other. They have um, they have a relationship of some kind, whether that be um, amicable or not. I think there's some mo more details about it that I haven't read yet, but... Um, you know, they obviously have a relationship of some kind. Actually, um, since I'm a Saren follower, when you ask uh, Zeros about Saren, he basically says that he sees that you are a follower of Saren, and he's actually, he says he's pleased that you follow her. Um, he, he says uh, that he's pleased that he, that you um, follow basically in her teachings and her, um, per and seek her protection, and that in turn you protect her. Like, he... He seems to hold Saren in a l high regard, considering, um, especially comparing some of his remarks of other gods, especially Saradomen. Saradomen, he seemed to get a little more agitated about him, um, at least in my opinion. You know, Zamorak, he obviously, I'm, I mean, as much as he says that he doesn't begrudge Zer Zamorak, I'm... I find it very hard to believe that there's like that he's basically forgiven the guy or the Majorat, I guess. I don't I find that extremely hard to believe. Um so, you know, I'm not in in my in my opinion the lore was zeros. I believe him for the most part, but I'm not as naive to believe that he wasn't lying at some points and like glossing over things and exaggerating things and twisting them to his own, you know, purposes to sway you to his side. Um I'm not naive enough to believe that he didn't do that and that he's telling the whole truth, but I think that he most of the stuff that he told you is for the most part the truth. So, um you know, we'll see where that goes definitely in the future. Um I chose to return him to the world. I just, I personally thought that it would return, it would open up a lot more doors and give up a lot more options for future content if um, Zeros was introduced into the game. How he, um, you know, that you're on his side, really, even if you don't exactly support him. Um, although, to be honest, if I had to pick a second god, it probably would be Z Zeros. Um, I see the validity in his arguments and in his religion. I actually um, find him quite interesting. Um, he's very charismatic. He's very um, logical. Uh, he's very... Um that's the word I'm looking for. He's he's an enigma, really. He's very mysterious. You do a lot of times you really don't know what he's going after. Obviously, he wants to become an elder god, but to what ends? You're not exactly sure. He says he'll speak on behalf of the mortal races to the elder gods, but one like what's to say that they'll listen to him? Uh, to what what will he actually say? How will he you know advocate for mortal races? Like there's a lot of things that uh you know, you are very questionable about his desire to become an elder god, for sure. Um, but I'm interested to see where it goes, definitely. Um, also, I get the very feeling that this is only the tip of the iceberg of where we'll, where we'll go with Saren, for sure, as well. Um, you know, with the Elf City coming out this, this summer, you, you cannot, I'm pretty sure you cannot, like, just introduce the Elf City into the game without having at least delving deeper into Saren, if not bringing her back. I am fairly confident, probably about 80, 70 to 80 percent sure they will bring her back um, this summer during the Elf City, or at least at some point in the future that she will come back. My, you know, initial thoughts are that, you know, if Zeros can basically die um, and then reform himself, um, why would Saren not be able to if they're counterparts? Obviously, there will be different circumstances because Saren um, shattered herself into crystals and spread herself across Gilinor. Um, I think the elves were under the impression that if they rebuilt the elf city, the crystal city, or or they they um, like unlocked the crystal city, or if they went back to their home world, they could um, bring her back. Um, so I definitely think it's possible, and I'm looking forward to that. I'm definitely looking forward to more more background history and you know more interactions with her because obviously she's the god that i follow um she like the, one of the big reasons that i follow her is i find her the most interesting out of all the gods um it's not really exactly because i follow her really her um religion or teachings or whatever to a t um there are some things that i don't really think that we're all that good but you know you get that with every god um you get you have your goods and your bads um but I, I do find her, honestly, the most fascinating of the gods, for sure. Um, I know she's a tier one god, along with, obviously, Guthix, and I believe Zeros, I mean, I mean, and I think there was one other god up, up on that tier.
I'm not entirely sure. Um, you know, it's all on the wiki, if or the, the unofficial wiki, if anyone wants to look, but um, I'm not entirely positive of that. Um, but yeah, it definitely was a good good quest for lore. Um, I have a lot of the Zeros, like, conversations and stuff up on my channel um, from, you know, based on my decisions and, you know, all that. So, obviously, other people are going to have different situations and different um, conversations, but I just put mine up because I thought it was interesting. It's a very long video. It's about 40 minutes. Uh, there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of just sheer lore in, in it, and... Um, you know, it's a long video. You know, if you're not interested in it, definitely don't have to watch it. But you know, for any of those, any of you guys who are interested, um, that's up there for you to watch if you'd like. Um, so yeah, I mean, the quest. I definitely recommend it. Um, if you're into lore, uh, the quest itself. If you're not really into lore, may not be as enjoyable for you. It may just be kind of a quest that you do to get a quest cape or just to do it for the rewards. The rewards are fairly good. You get you do get a good amount of experience, um, in some more difficult skills. Um, and you get some decent reward. You know, you get the uh, shard of Zeros, which um, protects you from everybody in everything in the um, God Wars dungeon. Which um, and it's also a pocket slot, so um, it doesn't take up like an armor slot or like an arrow slot or anything. So um, you just kind of have to give up your scrimshaws or your signs or your signs. So um, I don't think that's too big of a deal for most people. So I think that's a very handy um, thing, especially if you do. Um, God wears a lot. Um, you know, you also can uh, go get a large prismatic lamp from Wahisatel uh, after you're done. Uh, you can see, you get so you can get some extra divination experience um, from using your Emgar meter in the in like in the world gate. I'm not exactly sure where it is. I think it's like in the Elder Hall or something like that. Um, you know, you, there's a lot of uh, extra experience that you can get um, from the quests. So, it's really, it's a, it's a nice quest, for sure. Uh, it wasn't really helpful for me in terms of XP, except for the summoning experience. That was the only thing that really, like, helped me towards a max cape, I guess. The rest of it was kind of just, it was there. Um, and it was, like, cosme like cosmetic experience, is what my clanmates called it. Um, but, you know, I found it fairly interesting. You know, if you guys want to chat about it, or, like, post a comment about, like, your thoughts about the quest, or, like, your theories of lore, or your opinions about the lore, or whatever, definitely, um, I'd love to hear, hear them. I always love talking to people about lore. It's, you know, I was never a big lore fan, um, until the sixth age, and then the sixth age came out, and I was like, wow, lore is actually really interesting. Um, <clears throat> It's fairly, it's fun, it's kind of like a, just a fun pastime to do on RuneScape, um, along with kind of maxing and stuff, it's just, it's, it's fun, um, I enjoy it, so, uh, I definitely would be pleased, or, you know, I'd love to hear any kind of, like, opinions or, you know, thoughts or anything on, uh, the quest itself, or just anything else, I guess, involving lore, um, so, yeah, but, yeah, Saren, definitely, I think that she, we, this is obviously the, not the last we're gonna see of her at all. Uh, I think that sh this is only the beginning of where we're going to see her go. Obviously, this is also only the beginning of where we're going to see Zeros go. Um, Sliske, I think he's going to be interesting to deal with. Um, the way that, th with my choices, I kind of alienated him. I'm kind of an enemy um, uh, with uh, Sliske now. I don't know exactly how that's going to go. I'm not exactly too worried. But, um, you know, he, he it's there. You know, he, he is dangerous. Um, in his own right, for sure. Um, but you have, the, but by bringing Zeros back, you have the respect of other Zeros uh, followers. Most likely, um, in future content, you'd probably have like the respect of like Char and Nex and Azanadra and all of the uh, Moderat that uh, follow Zeros and uh, probably the vampires and demons as well, or some of the demons, not all of them, and the vampires. So I thought that would be interesting. I definitely think that. You know, I hope that they go somewhere good with this lore. I hope they don't just kind of, like, leave it and just, um, take it in weird places. I hope to see it grow, definitely, because they did, they did a very good job with lore for this quest. Um, like I said, that is the biggest, you know, pro that I see with the quest, um, is just the lore. It was really good. I really enjoyed it, so. Anyways, guys, you know, um, lore discussion, if you want to, you know, talk about it in the comments, or if you want to just, like, tell me your kind of opinions and whatnot, I'd love to read them, so. Anyways, guys, um, I will be getting 96 Hunter soon here. I'm only 50k from that. So, anyways, um, you know, I hope to see you later. I'll see you later. Um, hope to see you later. Um, thanks. Bye.